how many times must I tell you? You must never put your life on the line for me. Mother has always had a fascination for Lord Mortimer, but has never wanted to tell me why. We are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. All I can tell you is I'm looking for my sister. Do you believe your mother capable of torturing a child? An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. Johann Christoph von Wulner, Minister of Religious Affairs, and Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. You will find that Lord Mortimer is not what one would call conventional, Monsieur de Richet. Monsieur de Richet, I am arresting you for the murder of Elizabeth Adams. At last we meet, Monsieur de Richet. Do you mind if I call you Louis? Please do. Thank you. I wish to apologize wholeheartedly, Louis. I made you cross the seas, and I wasn't even here to welcome you. When I asked you to join us here, it, it was, of course, in the hope that you would help us find your mother. But an act of horrific violence occurred during the night. And I do not know if this is linked to the disappearance of Sarah. What are you getting at? What act of violence? We... we found Elizabeth Adams' body in her room. She was brutally murdered, stabbed several times. I'll get straight to the point, Louis. According to the initial elements at my disposal, you were the last person to see her alive. Yes, last night we... Uh... Do you suspect me? I want you to tell me everything that happened last night, and leave nothing out. Tell me, how did the evening begin? Duchess Hillsborough and I were returning to our rooms when Elizabeth came up to us. She was in a state of panic and assisted that she needed to speak to me. She said she feared for her life. I took my leave of the Duchess and followed Elizabeth to her room. Mm -hmm. Continue. She insisted we have a drink, without which she refused to confide anything. What exactly did she want to speak about? She claimed she saw my mother the previous evening on the cliff, if I remember correctly. Interesting. I will send someone as soon as possible. But do go on. I refused to go on drinking with her. She already seemed drunk and her conversation became confused. So then she ordered me to get out. If only I'd stayed. 
Don't blame yourself, Louis. How could you have known? But thank you for this new information. Louis, I shan't hide the fact that this tragedy puts me in a very delicate situation. I cannot risk upsetting the smooth operation of our next conference. But the case cannot remain unaddressed. I must reassure my guests, and justice will be done. And for that to happen, I must ask for your help. Why is that? You met Elizabeth. You spoke together, I believe. She trusted you. Listen, Louis. Find out who could have committed this murder. I refuse to believe that one of my guests is the murderer. I want to know who is responsible for this. And I trust you. You have my backing. You must stop at nothing. Can I count on you? Of course. H how would you like me to proceed? Maybe you could start by going to the scene of the crime. Elizabeth was attacked in her room. Can you tell me anything else about what happened? Now, Louis, I wouldn't want to influence you. Get over there and form your own opinion. Do you have any suspects in mind, my lord? I spent most of the night talking with Sir Gregory and his eminence Piaggi, so I think you can remove them from the list of suspects. Monsieur Bonaparte and President Washington left the party after midnight, I believe. They were tired and went up to bed. Right. I'll get up there immediately. Thank you, Louis. Now, once you've finished, come back and let me know your findings. I'll be waiting. And Louis, you've got permission to search through the guests' rooms. They've all been notified and they agree. Nightmare painted by Fusili in 1781. I've come to speak about the findings of the investigation, my lord. I'm listening, Louis. I'll be in touch as soon as I have any more information. Devil's Thorn, to be used to uncover the best disguised traits. Your Eminence, I imagine that you've heard the news about Miss Adams. Oh, what a tragedy, my son. How could uh, such a thing have happened? That's exactly what I'm trying to find out. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Last night? Mm. I saw the young French soldier, Bonaparte, I believe, hanging around near Miss Adams' room. But I would not want to get an innocent man into trouble, Louis. It's probably nothing. But if I were you, my son, 
I would talk to Monsieur Peru. You remember how violently he set upon Miss Adams. Oh, don't worry. He's on the list of suspects. Dante's purgatory. Why does your mind presume to flight when you're still like the imperfect grub, the worm before it's attained its final form? Charming. this chest. Hmm, which four-letter word could open this chest? Sir Jacques Perru.
What do you want from me, Derishe? Greetings. It's fallen to me Cut that... the crap! Get to the point. We both know why you're here. And have you got anything to tell me? What does it matter? It's too late anyway. Do what you have to do and get out. It's never too late, sir. If you have something to say, now is the time. You don't understand. Everything's already written. It's over. Why is he behaving like the perfect culprit? What is it that's already written? I'm not sure I follow you. No, you don't. All right, have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. Let's get right to it. Are you Elizabeth Adams' murderer? That is for you to prove, if I'm not mistaken, boy. You weren't expecting me to do all the legwork for you, were you? Lazy man. Two days ago, I surprised you having a go at Miss Adams. What happened? Did you want to give her another beating? She wouldn't let you push her around again, huh? Shut up, you little shit! You have no idea what happened, and here you are, carping away! You think you're Investigator of the Year. Have you taken a look at yourself, Derishe? Didn't you get enough beating her black and blue the last time? I did not! Why? Nothing. Get away from me. Just as soon as you stop treating me like I'm an idiot. If you wanted people to think you were guilty, you couldn't have done any better. So cut the bullshit and come clean now. I can't! He'll come for revenge. Who? No one! Just shut your trap, goddammit! Yes, I was there. Yes, I walked in her blood. You've got all you need to wrap it up! Now scram! Jacques Perru, Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Duke Manuel Godoy. Monseigneur, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. President George Washington. Good day, Monsieur de Richer. Mr. Volner, are you looking for anything in particular? Next to Elizabeth's room? I... I... No, no, I... Nothing special. I'd have thought this is not really the shortest way to get to your suite. Uh, yes, uh, I wasn't really looking where I was going. I shall leave you now, sir. I will return to my room.
has uh, finished with this room? No, I haven't gone over everything yet. Uh, sir may take his time. When Sir would like to leave, Sir has only to tell me. My dear Elizabeth. sign of bruising on the skull the only clue is a scar from a previous craniectomy poor elizabeth she she must have been very young when she went through all that that's torture she also has old scars around the neck maybe mutilations what a strange smell Laudanum. Certain courtiers use it to get drunk. If taken in large quantities, it can provoke fits of madness. She bled from the nose. signs of bleeding, but I don't see any traces of bruising. There are numerous marks on the body. She must have fought like a lion. It couldn't have happened without a lot of noise. There are also a number of old scars. People who scar themselves in this way generally do so to release some kind of psychological suffering. By trying to master the pain, they establish their self-control. Scarring, ugh. Scarring isn't very regular, but they're mostly from old cuts. She had the Sigillum de Amoth tattooed on her, the symbol of the living God, written in the language of angels, according to believers. It is rare for someone to know about symbols like this at her age, unless her mother was a tutor. Blood, but no trace of blows on the legs. The direction the blood streaks caused by the wounds to the thorax show that she was standing when she lost blood. This proves that she was standing when she was assassinated, possibly held by someone or something. More tattoos, similar to those on the rest of her body. I count no fewer than nine wounds on the thorax with a lot of blood. On first sight, I'd say that's what caused her death. It looks as though the wounds were inflicted from a precise angle, as if, as if the murderer was standing behind Elizabeth. Some of these tattoos are veritable works of... What's that? The skin between her breasts is different. Bloody hell! This tattoo was drawn on a page of leather and stitched onto her skin. 
probably during childhood, if the scars are anything to go by. It's the same kind of tattoo as on the rest of her body. Some of these tattoos are veritable works of... What's that? The skin between her breasts is different. Bloody hell! This tattoo was drawn on a page of leather and stitched onto her skin. Probably during childhood, if the scars are anything to go by. It's the same kind of tattoo as on the rest of her body. No wounds, but blood on the right hand. Nothing on the left except that tattooed symbol. This pinnacle's a trap. The wearers of the pinnacle thought that they were protected from evil by surrounding it inside the different circles of the pinnacle. No marks or bruising around the wrists. It doesn't look like she was tied up or held by force. girl bled to death. Whoever left that footprint has boats for feet. That's at least a size 15. Where's a size like that here? Peru? Washington, maybe. The handprint on the handle is really small. I can't imagine a man with a hand that size. It must be from a woman's hand. The blade is short and thin. Well sharpened, apparently. It's covered in blood. Still fresh. The lower part of the handle is unsullied by blood. The murderer gripped the weapon so tight that there's no blood where he held it. The handprint indicates a small and slender hand. A knocked over bottle of wine. thing Elizabeth served me last night. Still just as disgusting. I don't know what's happened to this wine, but it's undrinkable. The clock stopped at 354. If it was smashed during the murder, then I've just established the time of the crime. Vials of laudanum. The label shows that this laudanum comes straight from America. I wonder if Washington's involved. What the hell's been going on here? A 
wonder if Elizabeth's death has anything at all to do with this pentagram. If a ritual went wrong and degenerated, Elizabeth would probably have been killed in the center of the pentagram, not three meters from here. That's strange. A pentagram? What the hell's been going on here? Contrary to what most people believe, a pentagram's not there to conjure up, I don't know, what evil or demonic creature. With the point toward the top, the pentagram is an ancient symbol of protection against evil. Many esoteric rituals are based on this shape. Could Elizabeth have been sacrificed during an occult ritual? A notebook written in Elizabeth's handwriting. It is written in a mix of several languages. Not too easy to work out. August 24th. Pistol? Fairly new, I'd say. And judging by the weight of it, fairly light. Hmm. There's a few dried traces of blood on the grip. Difficult to know for sure how they got there. It's extremely well maintained. The barrel is perfectly clean. It isn't loaded and... Well, there's no traces of gunshot residue. I'd conclude that it hasn't been used recently. A tribute engraved on the barrel. To the liberators of France. Right. I shall have to find its owner. A piece of fabric. High quality at that. I'd say it's silk. Going by the texture and the gray hue, it must come from a, a dress, that kind that women of quality wear. The color doesn't correspond to Emily's black outfits, and Elizabeth doesn't have anything quite like this in her wardrobe. Let's take a closer look. It's a little dirty. It must come from the bottom of the dress where it touches the ground. I recognize that moiré pattern. It's the same as the travel dress my mother was wearing when she left. But why the hell did she come into this room? Piece of fabric. High quality at that. I'd say it's silk. Going by the texture and the gray hue, it must come from a, a dress, that kind that women of quality wear. It's a travel dress. The silk has been lightly waxed to protect it from bad weather. And I know the very woman who came up with the idea, given all the traveling she does. My mother. God help us. Why did she come here in the first place? The material appears to have undergone abnormal wear and tear. She must have been scouring the countryside, and that doesn't look good. Vials of laudanum. Has Sir finished with this room? I know enough now. Thank you. Very well, sir. Sir may return whenever need be. I shall guard the door.
Monsieur Johann von Wulner. Sorrows of Young Werther. There's a handwritten text signed by Von Wohner on this first page. Dear Elizabeth, I know that this book is but a small token compared to the delightful moments you gave me, but I hope that this will nonetheless keep the memory alive. Your ever obedient servant. So, Wohner had a relationship with Elizabeth, but that's hardly surprising given his fondness for the occult. Table of alchemical symbols. Someone circled the zinc symbol. Golden elixir. The alchemist is a young man. Chest locked with a four letter code, surely a word close to the owner's heart. Amber crystals. The alchemist is an old man.
What can I do for you, Duriche? Monsieur, Lord Mortimer has appointed me to investigate the tragedy that befell us last night. Oh, yes. It's horrible. Yes. How can I help, monsieur? Excuse me for asking, but did you know Miss Adams? Oh, she... Uh, not really, to tell the truth. No. I found the Werther dedication, signed by your hand, monsieur. Would you like to change your version now? Be careful, Durichet. Don't push your luck. My relationship with Miss Adams was pure and has nothing to do with you. Well, continue playing the detective as you see fit. But if I find the bastard who did that to Elizabeth, I will... Yes! I would have preferred a simple response, but I see I have my answer now. I get the impression that your romance was over. Am I right? So? What does it matter to you? I would never have attacked her, if that's what you're insinuating. Who put an end to the relationship? You or her? It was her. It was her. But what does that matter? We both agreed. Exactly how long had you been seeing her? And I have no reason to answer you. I see. Is that what you want me to tell Lord Mortimer when he asks what I found out? It's... it's only been a few weeks. Where were you last night? In my room. I read a few ancient manuscripts before going to bed, but I didn't stay up long. I was tired. Thank you kindly. We finished. I'll have a look around and then take my leave. Do whatever you have to do. Jacques Perru. Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. Hannibal crossing the Alps. Another military success. Why do I get nothing but visions of horror in my room? The Battle of Alexander at Issus, or how Alexander the Great triumphed over King Darius. Yet another one with delusions of grandeur. Devil's Thorn. I'll keep it. The Prince by Machiavelli. A perfect read for anyone with a surfeit of ambition. Hmm, that might come in handy. Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost.
It's a beautiful weapon. A Levy Damask Blade. It's marked with the initials of the manufacturer in Versailles. My dearest son, I'm writing to implore you to act quickly. The situation is rapidly worsening here. Powell Lee continues to steer our motherland, Corsica, toward open warfare between France and England. His men are everywhere. We are obliged to go into hiding and are unable to remain in the same place for more than two days. I wouldn't be surprised if they targeted us soon. Make haste, my son. You hold our destiny in your hands. A bicorn decorated with a cockade. It must belong to a French soldier. Golden elixir. Hmm. I'll keep it for later. Person Gatterix throws down his arms at the feet of Julius My Caesar dear by Royer. As previously agreed, I would like to ask you to join us in January on my island to participate in the high society meeting organized for the occasion. We shall be able to continue our discussion about our project for a new order for France. I have a proposition to make to you concerning your wish to put a strong leader at the head of France. I trust you to be discreet as to your coming. See you soon. Lord William Mortimer. There's just one holster in Bonaparte's gear, and the pistol is missing. On the other hand, his cleaning equipment is in mint condition. That's typical of the soldier in him. French actor Talma is Nero in Britannicus. Amber. A Chinese coin, recognizable by the hole in the middle. If I remember rightly, that's called a cash. Monsieur de Richer, please be quick. We are both very busy. Did you hear about young Elizabeth? Indeed. It is deeply regrettable. Lord Mortimer asked me to... I know. You no doubt want to know my alibi. I spent the night downstairs playing cards. Can you tell me who was present at the game, please? Well... There were Lord Mortimer, President Washington, and Sir Gregory. Thank you. Ah, and His Eminence Piaget as well. Excuse me, I nearly forgot him. Poor soul. Did any of you leave during the game? Not that I know of, monsieur. I didn't exactly spend my time noting the other guests' comings and goings, but I don't think so. Thank you. What time did the game end? I can't say exactly. As for me, I must have stayed until midnight. I was exhausted, oh, couldn't think straight. So I preferred to go up to bed. On your way up to bed, did you notice anything out of the ordinary? No, not in the least. The whole manor was sound asleep. <laughs> not really, no. Did you notice anything unusual during the evening? Nothing at all, except the luck of the devil of Lord Mortimer and Sir Gregory at cards. Did they win much? Oh la la, monsieur, they cleaned us out more like. But I plan on getting it all back before we leave.
someone saw you not far from the victim's room, can you tell me what you were doing exactly, please? I can tell you that someone is an idiot. I wanted to warn her to be careful. You see, on the night of my arrival, I saw someone leaving her room in haste, and I wanted to speak to her, to warn her. Unfortunately, the young lady slipped through my fingers each time. Now I know why. She had every reason to be worried. What an idiot I was not to insist. I could have helped her. I've been studying him for a while now, and I don't think he was lying. Yet, I'm surprised how easy it was for me to read him. It must surely be his military side. I wish they all could be like that. My investigation would be finished already. As any good soldier would, I imagine you own a firearm. May I see it? Oh, well, if you really want to, here is my pistol. Don't worry, it is not loaded. Do you have several of these? In Corsica, oui, but not on me when I am traveling. Only a bandit would carry such an arsenal. Thank you. Well, have we finished, monsieur? Exactly. Thanks again for all your answers. Good day. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Tending children at the orphanage in Harlem. I find it a little hard to understand this painting choice. King George III in coronation robes. Nice touch for the room of an English duchess. Dear E, I received your last letter. Unfortunately, the Crown informed the Golden Order that our mission should, under no circumstances, hamper Sir Gregory's plans. Decidedly, they have support from the highest level in Buckingham Palace. So here we both are, hands and feet tied, and little room to maneuver. Keep me abreast of events. Our mission is becoming more complicated. Yours, E. P.S. The French chapter of the Order doesn't appear to know anything about the arrival of our friend Sarah. I therefore cannot comment on it. However, my guess is that she has come here for personal reasons. Dear E, I received your last letter. Grammar of Port-Royal. Ah, the artistry of the French language and all its splendor. Whoever masters French commands the world, at least une partie of it.
A letter from William Pitt the Younger addressed to Emily. He's the present prime minister of cash. Two coils circle the lock. Queen Charlotte. All the royal family of England is there from what I can tell. A letter from William Pitt the Elder addressed to Emily. He was the English Prime Minister. This letter dates from 15 years ago now. Madam. I shall never thank you enough for all your care and attention. I shall be indebted to you until my last breath. If you have any request of me, you only need ask. With regards to my son William, I shall never thank you enough for looking after him. You know the latter's preferences, and you will understand he needs you desperately. For that, and as agreed with Queen Charlotte, our friend Duke Hillsborough will carry out his task and meet with you within six months. From then on, You'll be free from want. Yours sincerely, William Pitt, Count of Chatham. A devil's thorn to be used to uncover the best disguised traits. What can I do for you, Louis? I've come to see you about last night's tragedy. Did you hear anything about what happened to Elizabeth? Yes, we all did. Rumors spread quickly, you know. How awful. I didn't know her well, but I hope at least the poor thing didn't suffer too much. Death came quickly. You can be assured of that. If such a senseless act can happen here, then none of us is truly safe anywhere. Lord Mortimer must be mortified that one of his guests could have committed such an act, don't you think? He is indeed very upset about it. It's only natural after such a violent murder. Violent? What do you mean? Elizabeth was stabbed nine times. Oh my god, Louis. How awful. The murderer must have had a serious grudge against her to set upon her like that. It must have been a crime of passion. Do you know what happened exactly? In fact, Lord Mortimer has asked me to look into this case, Emily. Really? Are you Lord Mortimer's snoop now? I'm doing it for Elizabeth, not to please Mortimer. Good for you. Quite right, too. Have you found out anything? Did you and Elizabeth get to know each other? <sighs> I must admit, Louis, I... I didn't take much interest in her. I feel a bit guilty about it, but I never actually spoke to her. She seemed burdened by her problems, and as she wasn't invited to the conference, I didn't really seek her out. I'm now interviewing all the guests to establish the alibis for each person. Just so that I can cross you off the list of suspects, can you tell me what you were doing on the night of the murder? Am I given to understand that I'm on the list of suspects? Don't take it the wrong way, but I must consider every possibility. Well, if you absolutely wanted to be sure of my activities that evening, you only had to join me, you know. I know, Emily. Especially since I couldn't prevent the murder, even though I spent part of the evening with Elizabeth. You're... you're sure it's not too hard to bear for you? The fact is, I don't have a choice. But I will find the murderer. I owe Elizabeth that, at least. I hear you were in discussions with the Holy See. Oh, either His Eminence can't keep his tongue from wagging, or you've been poking your nose where you shouldn't, sir. Even so, Emily. 
You're raising a royalist army. That's no small matter. And you are straying from the subject. Is there anything else you wanted to ask me? I found a torn piece of dress in Miss Adams' room. Gray silk. Where's it from? That's what I'm trying to find out. The color doesn't match any of Elizabeth's dresses, but I might not have found all of her clothes yet. Good Lord, Louia. I... Do you realize what this means? If this piece of dress isn't from Elizabeth, then it's... I don't have any gray silk dresses, Louis. Neither does my sister since we wear the same clothes. Yeah. That's exactly what I wanted to check with you. I'm so sorry, Louis. Thank you. Are you all right? You know, I'm sure there's a good reason why your mother was at the scene. Thank you, Emily. We found the murder weapon. What is it? A dagger, quite slim. Have you found its owner? Not yet, still searching as it happens. That said, since the blade penetrated the body several times, the murderer's hand will have been covered in blood. Mm. You think that's a clue? The handprint was a very slender hand, Emily. Probably that of a woman. Do you realize what that means? There are only three of us on the island. Bearing in mind that neither my sister nor myself had any reason to set upon the young lady, that means... I know, Emily. I know. Keep up your courage, Louis. I'm sure there's an explanation. You're bound to shed some light on it all. If what you say is true, Emily, I'm less and less enthusiastic about shedding any light on the subject. I won't keep you, Emily. Thank you for answering my questions. See you, Louis. Golden Elixir. Duke Manuel Godoy. Huh, that's me. Monseigneur, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. President George Washington. Portrait of George Washington. It looks like a note between Emily and Washington about trade deals. 
My dear George, I'd like to invite you to join me as planned at my place. I have a project to show you. It is time that the United States played a more important role on the world stage. I understand your reluctance of playing with fire. I know your new country is very young, but rest assured that I would do nothing to jeopardize what we have built together. I look forward to seeing you soon. Your friend, William. Greetings, Liam. Mr. President, you can guess why I'm here. Of course. Lord Mortimer has sent me to ask you a few questions about last night. It's... How am I going to tell Elizabeth's father that she's dead? I know, Mr. President. I shall endeavor to find out the truth about this tragedy. I must ask you to help me, though. Please. Find the degenerate pig who did this, Louis. Are you all right, Mr. President? Are you feeling all right? Oh, don't worry. It's this rotten toothache. What do you expect? I'm no spring chicken now. Tell me, Mr. President, had you spoken to Elizabeth since your arrival? You know her father. You thought she was dead. No, I didn't. And I believe I'll be taking my remorse with me to my grave. I wanted to, but I didn't know where to begin. You can't blame yourself. You, well, you couldn't have known that her days were numbered. Were you aware that Elizabeth took laudanum? Yes. She came to ask me for some. She had finished her reserve, I believe. Did she tell you why she was so desperate to get some, Mr. President? She said she had terrible migraines that wouldn't go away. More likely for the voices she heard, and not the migraines. I'm talking to all the guests to find out who has an alibi and, well, who doesn't, Mr. President. Can you tell me what you were doing last night so that I can strike your name off the list? I spent the night right here, reading. All night? Exactly. Emily stopped by in the middle of the night, you can ask her. She wanted to talk about some business we have in common. Anything whatsoever to do with Elizabeth? Not at all, Louis. A business matter. Do you know why she came to the island? To get help, if I'm not mistaken. Isn't that right? Indeed. Sir Gregory suggested to her father that he introduce her to Lord Mortimer to see if he could help her. It would appear that she wasn't invited to the conference. That doesn't surprise me. The poor girl was in no way concerned by our business, and she had no political clout. So, I don't understand why Sir Gregory invited her during the conference of his good friend Lord Mortimer. He must have realized that he wouldn't have much time to grant her. Preparing a conference does not seem an easy task. 
On the evening of our arrival, Lord Mortimer didn't even welcome us, what with his being so busy and all. Yes, you're right, Nui. I didn't think of that. It is indeed rather surprising. The easiest thing to do is simply ask him, you know. Of course. Mr. President, we found a footprint at the scene of the crime. Not a dress shoe, I hope. That's all I wear. No, rest assured. It looks like the print of a big ankle boot. A large size, I'd say. Perfect. That should help you, Louis. It's a clue. Monsieur Johann von Wulner. this chest. I've come to speak about the findings of the investigation, my lord. I'm listening, Louis. I'm sorry, my lord, but I don't have any evidence conclusive enough to allow me to name the culprit with certitude. Really? I see. Well, that's your decision, Louis, and I accept it. Given the distinguished guests and the sensitive political issues involved at the conference, I trust you'll leave me to conclude the case in my own way. Right. It's time we spoke about your mother, Louis. She isn't missing, you know. What? What do you mean? My mother has left traces in every nook and cranny of your island, my lord. She's definitely here. Now, what worries me most is why she doesn't show herself. That doesn't make me feel any better, Louis. What was the official reason why my mother came to your island? I knew about your mother's activities and yours in the Golden Order. I thought we had everything to gain by working together. You mean the cannon deal with Monsieur Bonaparte? Among others, yes. 
How did you hear about that? Monsieur Bonaparte came to speak to me about it yesterday, during lunch. I see. So impetuous. He was supposed to let me speak to you about it first. Our friend Napoleon desperately needed financial backing to properly equip his army. I took it upon myself to back him, because I have a firm conviction that he can go far. We shall see. However, there's one thing that surprises me. Isn't Bonaparte a bit young to deserve so much attention? Well, you come straight to the point. I like that. Indeed, if you knew just how much you remind me of him. Trust me, I'll wager that Monsieur Napoleon will soon prove himself. I'm working on it, at least. Once this deal was closed, I had big plans for Sarah. Such as what? You see, I've invited several influential figures on my island to present them with a project at the conference. It will be presented later today. I thought that the Golden Order had a role to play. And I still think so. I was hoping Sarah would be able to join us. Hmm. I see. Indeed, if by chance your mother decided not to return to us before the conference, would you do me the great honor of attending? If only to follow the deliberations while waiting for her to duly take her seat. Why not? We shall see. Ah, thank you so much. In this way, you'll be able to keep your mother informed of what is said. Um, there's something else I'd like to briefly go over. Earlier, you asked me the official reason for your mother's presence here. Is there an off-the-record reason why your mother came here? If only my mother had trusted me, but she remained very mysterious. I'd have been delighted to answer your question. Is this usual for her? As head of the Order, secrets are her bread and butter, as you can imagine. That said, it's the first time she hasn't let me in on the reason for her trip. And it intrigues me, to tell you the truth. Well, I am sure that Sarah will explain everything once she reappears. There's something I still don't get. In your opinion, why would your mother remain in hiding over several weeks? Her not coming back to the manor after so long makes me wonder if she is wary of someone. Well, certainly. But whom? The only ones who were present during her stay were Sir Gregory, Duchess Hillsborough, Mr. Von Bolder, and myself. My lord, I'm obliged to ask this question, but please don't take offense to it. Ah, you wonder if Sarah was wary of me. Uh, it just so happens that I've been asking myself the very same question. Because I can't explain why Sarah didn't come to see me, knowing how influential I am. But to your point, I can't imagine she would be. Although I am obviously not the best person to answer that question. Thank you. I... I had to ask. The only thing I can tell you is that Sarah had indeed changed. At the beginning of her stay here, we enjoyed spending time together, solving the world's problems. You seem to know my mother very well, my lord. What did you talk about together? Oh, as soon as we had a little free time, we liked to share points of view about practically any subject. We would find ourselves embarked on interminable discussions that could go from Monsieur Blanchard's flight in a hot air balloon to the Treaty of Jersey, or the adoption of the metric system in France last year, or even Mr. Eli Whitney's invention in the United States. My mother must have undoubtedly taken great pleasure in these exchanges. She always was one to appreciate broadening her knowledge. I'm surprised she didn't get you started on the Crusades. It was her favorite subject. Huh, are you joking? Sarah and I spent entire days together reliving them. 
It so happens that the Crusades are also my subject of predilection, especially the third. My ancestor distinguished himself brilliantly during the siege of Saint-Jean d'Acre. Unfortunately, my lord, the Crusades are not my chosen field. Well, it doesn't matter. You have plenty of time to learn. Your mother is a very well-read woman. You're quite lucky to have her as a model, Louis. Yes, I know. But I'm still very worried. I must admit, there are worse things to worry about now, Louis. What do you mean? Since she disappeared, your mother has been seen once. Her behavior on the evening of your arrival greatly surprised Gregory and myself. She resurfaced to attack Emma, Emily Hillsborough's twin sister. And she shot her with a pistol. Then, before Gregory could intervene, she ran off and disappeared again. I beg your pardon? Hang on. That means my vision on the wharf, it, it was actually happening inside the manor. Mother shot Emily's sister? The very person she came looking for? Why would she do that? Excuse me, but between that and the childhood of Lady Adams, it's, it's all a bit much for me to cope with. I need to piece it all together again to see things more clearly. You said that you spent a lot of time talking together at the beginning. What happened for that to change? I'm afraid I, I haven't much to tell you. The more the days went by, the more she withdrew into herself. She never gave me an explanation. Until the day came when she purely and simply disappeared. Where, where did she go when she wanted to be alone? She would shut herself away in a room we use as a box room. Upstairs. W would you allow me to go there? Naturally, Louis, of course. I'll send you a servant to open it. Thank you. One last thing, although I don't know if there is a connection. I'm listening. A gate was forced the other night near the wharf. Nothing serious, just a few small things damaged. Mm-hmm. I see. I might be about to find a trace of her passage. Sorry, Mother, but I don't want him on my back. You'll have to take the blame for me. I can't see how Sarah could have done this, but then I can't think of any other solution either. I'll take a closer look. That's all I can tell you about the disappearance of your mother, Louis. I would like to have been more helpful. I shall stay on her trail and follow up any leads. Thank you. Uh, we will meet later on to welcome our last guest. In the meantime, I shall get someone to open the box room upstairs for you. Thank you. Hmm, the room is just opposite Mortimer's study. in the chimney. There's a legible fragment left. Hey, I recognize my mother's handwriting. She says we must find a safer way to communicate. Someone is on to us. Trust in my faith in the man with the sword. So mother had an accomplice here. Who could it be? Who could she be suspicious of? I must find the next part. Faith, sword, 
I recognize her love of riddles there. There are burnt papers in the chimney. There's a legible fragment left. Hey, I recognize my mother's handwriting. She says we must find a safer way to communicate. Someone is on to us. Trust in my faith in the man with the sword. So mother had an accomplice here. Who could it be? Who could she be suspicious of? I must find the next part. Faith, sword. <laughs> I recognize her love of riddles there. Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured. For what comes up here from the mortal world must be. What is this disc? St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio. Caravaggio attained a magnificent command of black and the play of colors too. Paul facing an ordeal, the curtains of his illusions being raised and receives the light from his savior. The fierce opponent of the first Christians, St. Paul is suddenly struck by the call of Jesus Christ and converts. It's the best known conversion in Christian history, which teaches us that even enemies of Christ can be saved and even become his greatest apostles after finding faith. From what I can recall, the account of his conversion could be found in the epistles to the Galatians, the Philippians, the Corinthians, and the Acts of the Apostles. door appears to be locked on the other side. I think I heard something fall to the ground. A metallic sound, like, like a key falling to the floor. We'll see if it works. It's open. Great, honey. St. Paul painted by Guido Rini. St. Paul is shown holding a sword. Strange, there's hardly any dust, as if the painting's been cleaned recently. There's a small inscription engraved on the frame. Let's take a closer look. This is how Paul spoke to his pilgrims from Rome. Just above that, someone's written down the figure 11 on the painting and underlined it twice. I don't know, what does that mean? So we have the figure 11 twice underlined and a story of a group of pilgrims who it looks like Paul is speaking to. Maybe it's a code. There, there must be a connection. A text on Paul must be somewhere, and it must be associated with the figure 11. But what's the story with these pilgrims? I mean, a connection with the figure, maybe?
Beginning of St. Mark from the Collection of the Apostles by Guido Rini. It's St. John, painted by Guido Rini. The New Testament. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John and Jordan. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. A drawing of the Apostle Matthew, painted by Guido Rini. He's represented as writing the word of the Lord, transmitted by the Holy Spirit, who appears here in the guise of an angel. A chest with the occult symbol representing air. St. Paul painted by Guido Rini. Of the four apostles shown in this piece, Paul is the only one who isn't an evangelist. He is the 13th apostle. Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Rini. It looks like someone touched this commode recently their fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. This book is incredibly precious. I believe this is the book my mother referred to when calling upon the Lord. A volume of the Glutenberg Bible. I guess I'll just come back later. St. Paul painted by Guido Rini. He that believeth on him is not condemned. 
But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Gogotha. I and my father are one. I guess I'll just come back later. Now, there is a Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatea, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John and Jordan. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests which did so. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith hath made thee whole, and the woman was made whole from that hour.
and this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Oh, wait, a note from Mother is carefully folded between the pages here. What does it say? Dear E, I'm glad you found this note. I was afraid the code of the two groups of pilgrims would mislead you. Pick up the package. You know where, and hide it where no one will find it. It's imperative awaiting your reply, hidden behind the youngest apostle. What? The youngest apostle? What does mother mean by that? St. John, painted by Guido Rini. St. John is the only apostle painted in this gallery who hasn't got a beard. Hey, wait! That means it's him. He's the youngest apostle. Right! This painting is therefore associated with the answer which E had to give to my mother. Now, I just need to know how to recover the answer. It looks like it's been taken down recently. But wasn't my mother said that she would wait for an answer hidden behind the apostle? Ah, of course. There's something written behind the painting. On the second day, the pilgrims will listen to the prophecy of the young apostle. They shall add one companion to their left and three to their right to complete their rank. What does it mean? should add a companion to their left and three to their right to complete their ranks. I imagine it applies to their code, the one mother set up with the pilgrims. What's this? A group of pilgrims who Paul was talking to and now John is telling them prophecies? Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Rini. Looks like someone touched this commode recently. There are fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. too cumbersome for me to unhook here, but judging by the dust, it hasn't been moved for months, if not years. On the second day, the pilgrims will listen to the prophecy of the young apostle. They shall add one companion to their left and three to their right to complete their rank. What does it mean?
There's something else behind this painting. It says half of each group will join the first city of Corinth. What the hell does that mean? There's something else behind this painting. It says half of each group will join the first city of Corinth. What the hell does that mean? chest with the occult symbol representing air. There's something else behind this painting. It says half of each group will join the first city of Corinth. What the hell does that mean? Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Reni. Looks like someone touched this commode recently. Their fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio. St. Paul is the only saint to be presented twice in these paintings, contrary to the other apostles. How come? Caravaggio attained a magnificent command of black and the play of colors too. Paul facing an ordeal, the curtains of his illusions being raised and receives the light from his savior. This painting has been hanging here for a long time. A lot of dust is built up on it. Well, a finger has drawn a number in the thin layer of dust. I can read the number four. Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured. For what comes up here from the more there are burnt papers in the chimney. There's a legible fragment left. Hey, I recognize my mother's handwriting. She says we must find a safer way to communicate. Someone is on to us. Trust in my faith in the man with the sword. So mother had an accomplice here. Who could it be? Who could she be suspicious of? I must find the next part. Faith, sword. <laughs> I recognize her love of riddles there. There's nothing worth noticing here. Painting of St. Mark from the collection of the Apostles by Guido Rini. It's too cumbersome for me to unhook here, but judging by the dust, it hasn't been moved for months, if not years. No, nothing of value here. There are finger marks, deliberately drawn in the dust. Eight in all. Little characters are engraved on the chest of drawers under the urn. It's a sentence in Hebrew. Choosing the Hebrew alphabet is no coincidence. It's, it's got to be a reference to the Bible.
volume of the Glutenberg Bible. Because we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. I guess I'll just come back later. On the second day, the pilgrims will listen to the prophecy of the young apostle. They shall add one companion to their left and three to their right to complete their rank. What does it mean? There's something else behind this painting. It says half of each group will join the first city of Corinth. What the hell does that mean?
If we have hope in Christ in this life only, we are, of all men, most miserable. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. If we have hope in Christ in this life only, we are, of all men, most miserable. Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law with one another. Why do ye not rather suffer injustice? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Ah, look, here's a message. It is of paramount importance that no one finds it. Watch out for the Prussian. He's on the trail. Let's meet up. I'll leave it to you to organize the rendezvous. Not today. I'm unable to do it. In the meantime, I'll follow the first group to Mark who will reveal the answer to them. Prussian? Volner? I must have a word with him. And that first group of pilgrims, how many are there now? If I refer to the chapter I'm reading at the moment, six. Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured, for what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. St. Paul painted by Guido Rini. Their finger marks, deliberately drawn in the dust, eight in all. Little characters are engraved on the chest of drawers under the urn, the sentence in Hebrew. No. Nothing of value here. It's too cumbersome for me to unhook here, but judging by the dust, it hasn't been moved for months, if not years. Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Rini. 
It looks like someone touched this commode recently. There are fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John and Jordan. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jerus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread, and blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then came together unto him the Pharisees, and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. Then came together unto him the Pharisees, and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. chest with the occult symbol representing air.
There are burnt papers in the chimney. There's a legible fragment left. Hey, I recognize my mother's handwriting. She says we must find a safer way to communicate. Someone is on to us. Trust in my faith in the man with the sword. So mother had an accomplice here. Who could it be? Who could she be suspicious of? I must find the next part. Faith, sword. <laughs> I recognize her love of riddles there. Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured, for what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. St. Paul on the road to Damascus, by Caravaggio. by Guido Strange. St. Paul is shown twice, unlike the other disciples. St. Paul is shown holding a sword. Strange. There's hardly any dust, as if the painting's been cleaned recently. There's a small inscription engraved on the frame. Let's take a closer look. This is how Paul spoke to his pilgrims from Rome. Just above that, someone's written down the figure 11 on the painting and underlined it twice. Now, what does that mean? Amber crystals. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John and Jordan.
Then they suborned men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. I guess I'll just come back later. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. Here's a message. There are some complications. Indeed, the Prussian is insistent. What's happening at your end? Do you need help? If tonight is not possible, let's see tomorrow evening, in the south room, where we reviewed the situation. When Paul understood that only the axe counted, he went back on his tracks. I await your confirmation to his left, in the company of the pilgrims that have joined him. Yeah, this last comment is about their code. I should find new pilgrims near Paul. St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio. This painting has been hanging here for a long time. A lot of dust has built up on it. Well, a finger has drawn a number in the thin layer of dust. I can read the number four. And he became very hungry, and would have eaten, but while they were made ready, he fell into a trance. Hey, there's a note here. A message from Mother in reply to E. We must leave urgently, but first I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare. Watch out for Volner. He figured out I was avoiding him. A lay suspicion. See you tomorrow evening. Stand ready. For now, let's cease all communication until we meet. Take care of yourself. I suppose this must be the last message. What happened afterward? If it's what I suspect, I, I fear the worst. What did Mother mean by, I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare? I must go beyond the nightmare. What does she mean by that? I'm 
guessing it's a metaphor. I need to figure out what this means. Mortimer's getting his guests together. I ought to join them so I don't look suspicious. Time I went back and joined everyone in the small salon. You are expected in the small salon, sir. Emily, I must speak to you. What's the matter, Louis? I have news about your sister. What have you found out? Look, I've started piecing together the events leading up to my mother's disappearance and your sister's. D did my mother know about your secret? Yes, even though I belong to the English chapter, her rank in the Order gives her access to a good deal of personal information. It must have been Emma I saw in my vision. I was given to understand that my mother and your sister bonded during their stay.
I've got a question that might seem a little bit strange. I'm listening. If I said go beyond the nightmare, would that ring any bells? Hmm. No, means nothing to me. Do you mean literally or figuratively speaking? It might be a place. I, I don't know where, but it's a lead. You ought to ask his eminence. He knows the house and its estate very well, being a frequent visitor here. Thanks for the advice. Should I speak to her about my vision? If what I saw is true, she might want to take revenge. Emily, there's something else. Go on, then. It's... it's about your sister. I don't know what happened exactly, but it's possible that my mother had a go at her. I know, Louis. I found out that same evening. Well, thanks for not trying to hide it. What? Why didn't you tell me? I didn't know if I could trust you. Now I know I can. It seems that your mother tricked Emma. She apparently asked her to hide an important book, so that even she wouldn't know where it was. And then she shot her like a dog to make sure no one would ever find it again. Why would she do that? I don't know, Louis. But I'll find out. You can count on that. I'm sincerely sorry, Emily. Thank you, Louis. But you do realize your mother will have to accept the consequences of her acts. Th there must be an explanation, Emily. That's what we shall see. Come, Louis. They're waiting for us. I don't think you know who I am. You will pay dearly, Peru. I'm sure you were involved somewhere along the line. That's right. Pretend you don't know. One piece of advice. Don't travel through France on your way back, or it'll cost you dearly. Calm now, my friends. Let's calm down. Everyone seems to be a little unnecessarily heated. Don't forget where you are, please. What's going on here exactly? Sir Gregory called us together to introduce the last guest. But hardly had we arrived when he set upon Monsieur Peru. And who is this charming character? Manuel Godoy, the Duke of L'Alcudia. He's the head of the Spanish government, Monsieur de Richer. He's the one who, in practice, controls Spain. How could you dare do such a thing? Dios mio, you are all out of your minds! Really, Duke Manuel? What made you kick up such a farce? What? Have you not heard? Well, let me inform you that yesterday morning at 10.22 a.m. precisely, in the middle of the Place de la Révolution in Paris, by decree of the National Convention which Monsieur Peru works for, King Louis was guillotined. What? Oh, no. The King of France is dead, gentlemen. Our monarchies are in danger. I have said it before. How dare they? Oh, dear. Oh, as if it oh, gracious. No, it oh, God. It. Hmm. Friends, friends, let us calm down. Don't pretend to be surprised. He got a fair trial. Ridiculous. Bastard. He was sentenced to death by 361 votes to 360. You beheaded a king for one vote. Is that your democracy? What an obnoxious act. Until this, anything was possible. This political coup will have grave consequences. France is lost. Gentlemen, please, let us take a step back a moment. In the name of holiness, he was the highest representative of God in France, Emily. Gentlemen, Duchess, we're all among people of reputable company here. We should be able to manage the conflicts of our nations in a respectful and orderly manner. I fully agree with you, sir. But... That's enough, sir. With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? Louis Maras de Richer. Are you related to Sarah de Richer? Sarah is his mother, Duke. Gentlemen, this news affects us all, but I must ask you to remain calm. It's not the first time history has taken us by surprise. Let's ensure that our respective countries are allowed to respond appropriately to this news. Oh, rest assured. The response will not fall short, my friend. 
good for you. Well, Your Grace, here I was preparing to introduce you, as is proper, and you've beaten me to it. I'm delighted that we are all together at last. Our meeting will therefore be able to kick off shortly. I have just a few more little preparations to take care of before you all find out the reason for your presence here. In the meantime, I shall leave you to get to know one another. When you hear the bell, please proceed to the conclave room on my left, behind that door. I'll see you later. Uh, could you spare a moment, please, sir? I'm glad you ask. I want to talk to you, too. Of course. I heard about your mother's disappearance. He looks concerned. I don't know why, but I doubt it's from sympathy alone. Well, let's see what he wants from me. Any news of her? Have you found her, maybe? To hear you speak, it sounds like you and my mother were close. Let's say I hold your mother in high esteem, yes. We were even planning to work together. That's what he was getting at. Uh, did she tell you about our arrangement? The cat's out of the bag now. More or less, but please do, do refresh my memory. Yes, of course. Uh, nothing of great importance in itself. During one of our discussions, she spoke of an old book, which might have been of interest to me, and she had agreed to let me have it. A book about what? Ancient occultism. As you are aware, I am a doctor of theology. You might have come across some old books in her belongings, perhaps? The least one can say is that he doesn't beat around the bush. Sarah never travels without a few books. What does the one you're looking for look like, exactly? It resembles a grimoire. It's divided into seven parts, each one individually locked. It was made in such a way that if someone tried to tamper with it, the sheets would be permanently tarnished. It's a unique copy. There's only one. The mere mention of it makes his face light up. Well, I'll take a closer look, but I can't promise you anything. You seem very upset. Is it so important to you, this book? Well, it's, uh, it's the search of a lifetime. What can I say? Every time I move closer to it, it seems to slip away at the last minute. I was very surprised to learn that your mother had it in her possession. I thought it was with a certain von Borchert in Paris. Do you know him? Indeed. One of your close friends? Uh, no, not really, but we were close once. Precisely over the case that concerns us now, because he claimed to have the book I'm looking for. Another dishonest person. What can you say? Can't trust anyone these days, huh? No. No. You can't. I hope I've been able to satisfy your curiosity, Mr. Von Volner, and that you succeed in finding what you're looking for. Oh. And so do I. And now, what if you told me who you really are working for, instead of keeping up this pretense? I beg your pardon? We both know what you're looking for, Von Volner. You're the one who Von Birchert was planning to sell it to. For centuries, 
all those who have come into contact with the Al Azif have bitterly regretted it, Monsieur de Richet. You are playing a dangerous game. Please know that I am working for someone who does not appreciate anyone poking around in his business. Let me guess. Lord Mortimer. Oh, you are way off the mark. There's nothing more for us to say. Goodbye. Monsieur Bonaparte. May I speak with you a moment? May we? What do you think of Duke Godoy? Well, I'd rather not express any opinion of him. Why is that? His reputation is enough for me. Meaning... This gentleman enjoys people talking about him for too many reasons. His undeserved titles, more than ten in just four years, and each one more prestigious than the one before. You don't think he deserves them? If I had seen him on the battlefield, there might be some doubt. But that is not the case. The Queen would rather not risk losing him, so she consoles him with awards and titles. So you don't have a very positive opinion? His coveting French Catalonia does not encourage me to have one. I understand your point of view. Does expression go beyond the nightmare mean anything to you at all? Well, metaphorically, yes. It sums up the career of a soldier quite well. I doubt that is what you want to hear, though. Indeed. That's surely not what I'm looking for. Well, monsieur, if you are looking for a phrase book, Lord Mortimer must surely have one, given the number of books he has. You ought to check in the library of the tower. You never know. Would you have any more information about the comforts Lord Mortimer spoke of? Nothing at all. Mortimer is very committed to secrecy when it comes to his conferences. But given the presence of Monsieur Peru and ourselves, I think it must concern France to some extent. Otherwise, I doubt he would have invited three Frenchmen to his table, huh? Well, I'll be leaving you now. Shall we meet up again later? Uh, wait, Monsieur. Any news of your mother? Unfortunately not, no. I hope to speak with her about my deal before I leave. Let me know if you find her. A plus tard, monsieur. There's a pattern with five circles on this chest. I have no space left. I'll retrieve it later. Hey, these look like pages taken from an ancient encyclopedia.
What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service day and night, sir. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? What do you want, Louis? What do you think of our last guest? Well, I never thought I would get the chance to meet that Hispanic Casanova in the flesh. His reputation is well known. The gentleman collects lovers, including, would you believe it, the Queen of Spain. I doubt that Lord Mortimer invited him for his charm, if you want my opinion. Emily, what can you tell me about the coming conference? Sir Gregory and Lord Mortimer organize this kind of high society meeting every so often in order to consider the world situation. But to what purpose? Well, by bringing together the most influential people from the dominant nations of the modern world, they allow the mighty to discuss matters with calm clarity. There are precedents of armistices being signed at the end of these talks, you know. Talking while holding a glass of brandy makes things easier. You'll see. I've already asked you, but I don't remember the answer. What did you say to me about going beyond the nightmare? Good heavens, you're losing your memory. I haven't the least idea what it might mean. Oh. All right. Mm, that's too bad. Sir Jacques Perru? Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Duke Manuel Godoy. Sir Johann von Wulner.
Let's take a closer look. Dark chocolate beans, very bitter. They're greatly prized in high society. Now, now, what have we got here? Well, it looks like a model, a model of a lock. As if Mortimer is fond of complicating things sometimes. Well, I hope I never have to try and unlock it. Hang on. The nightmare painted by Fusili in 1781. Ah, this must be what my mother was talking about. Now, just need to find out what she meant by go beyond. Hey. Looks like it's mounted on rails on each side. It should lift up, I think. There must be a mechanism somewhere. Hmm, might come in handy. A minor bird. Well, Waldo, is your master good? Sarah Deriche? Waldo, you know Sarah? What have I done? It looks like I've killed him. Oh shit. I better not hang around. Hmm. Nope. No mechanism here. Dante's Purgatory. Why does your mind presume to flight when you're still like the imperfect grub, the worm before it's attained its final form? Charming. elsewhere. I don't think this book can help me. Aha, I found it. Oh, what on earth is this? A ring lock now? Great, that's all I needed. Looks like there's a marker on number one on the second roller. Well, I 
got it wrong. It doesn't matter. Well, I got it wrong. It doesn't matter. A painting depicting the Third Crusade. It's titled Winter Before the Fall of Saint Jean d'Acre. From what I know, the fall of Saint Jean d'Acre took place in the summer of 1191. Now, according to this title, it's winter time on the painting, so it can't have been late in the year of 1191. It must be in the first months of that year, probably in January or February of that year. Open sesame. <laughs> Let's see what you've been hiding, Lord Murderer. A fine-looking map of the Orient, indeed. Locked. shows the forces present in Europe, it's clear that France is surrounded by her enemies. However, a large number has been underlined in bold. 26 million. I know what it is. It's an estimation of my country's population. All our neighbors have far fewer inhabitants.
This shows the force is present in America. Weakness of the Human Psyche by Giham Trimor. Hmm. He says, It is possible to drill an idea into someone by constant daily repetition until the mind gives in. And goes on, There are hundreds of good ways to live life, but you only need one to convince the masses that it's the only one possible. <laughs> the author isn't letting any ethical principles get in his way, is he? shows the forces present in Africa. This is unexpected activity in this sector. It looks like there are also many unknowns even for Mortimer. This is my mother's writing. I've picked up her trail. What is she up to? Obviously she wants to lure Mortimer somewhere, but, but where? The only clue she's left for Mortimer is his stone sword. It must be intentional. It looks like a decorative sword, like from a statue, for example. And judging by the state of it, I'm, I'm guessing it's been left outside for a long time. I have absolutely got to find out where it came from. Three rusty old nails. They're about 20 centimeters long. Some goat skulls, chicken legs. Now we all know what that's- Look, a pack of tarot cards. Has he been reading the cards? Mortimer? That would surprise me. It is a typical draw on a line that answers a specific question. To the left, temperance, that announces a reward for one who patiently waits before taking any action. And in the middle, the chariot, which symbolizes triumph and business success. To the right, the emperor evokes a future full of power and stability. strange about this table. The Little Surgeon's Perfect Collection. Preservation using formaldehyde. Just as disgusting as ever. Looks like obsidian or Onyx it must weigh a ton. Looks like obsidian or onyx it must weigh a ton. These are feathers, pigeon, probably. A skeleton by the name of Gustav, if the plaque on the plinth is anything to go by. 
Mortimer's given a name to his anatomy skeleton. <laughs> That's morbid. Oh, his right hand is missing. A skeleton by the name of Gustav, if the plaque on the plinth is anything to go by. Hmm, that must be for writing the hoeing pigeon messages. chest with a motif representing the alchemical symbol of fire. Carmelite water. Am I seeing things, or is that an actual von Leeuwenhoek microscope? Incredible. Mortimer really is at the cutting edge of science. Even at the order, it took us ages to get one of those. A table of alchemical elements. So... Lord Mortimer also studies alchemy? It seems like he's interested in everything. Hmm, that must be for writing the homing pigeon messages. A skeleton by the name of Gustav, if the plaque on the plinth is anything to go by. More just give it a name. It was anatomy skeleton. <laughs> That's morbid. Oh, his right hand is missing. Feathers. Pigeon, probably. Something strange about this table. Thank you. 
little surgeon's perfect collection. Preservation using formaldehyde. Just as disgusting as ever. Weakness of the Human Psyche by Giham Trimor. Hmm. He says, It is possible to drill an idea into someone by constant daily repetition until the mind gives in. Oh shit, how am I going to get out of here now? This looks like the same mechanism as the one on the other side. Same as the one on the other side. This looks like the same mechanism as the one on the other side. Well, 
better not dwell on it then. This note is about a meeting with Lord Mortimer. There's no doubt about it. All right, I need to find out where the sword that came with it's from in order to find Mother. You're choking, I hope. Don't tell me you've done that. Really? How do you expect me to guess? Oh, for God's sake, just ask them. We must absolutely inform Sir Gregory. How long has he been trying to collect all the spears? I must have brought him the first one, twenty odd years ago. Do you know if he has managed to get the original? Well, in any case, he's got all the ones we had at the Vatican. He made me replace them with copies. But I don't understand your reaction. I'm sure it is nothing serious. Aha. Uh -huh. I can see very well you do not understand. You have done nothing less than sign our death warrants, and still you don't understand. I... Someone is listening. What? Monsieur de Richet, why not join us rather than find yourself eavesdropping? 
I, I, I didn't want to interrupt you. I, I'm sorry. Of course you didn't. So, my son, what can we do for you? I didn't mean to spy on you, but you caught my attention. Your Eminence, I don't know what you said to Mr. Von Volner, but the poor fellow looks positively crestfallen. Not at all. Don't, don't you believe it, Louis. I was just telling Monsieur about Lord Mortimer's burning passion for holy relics. You must have noticed he's a bit of a collector. Well, for years he has been searching high and low to bring all the copies of the Holy Spear together. As I was coming here, I thought I'd bring him a few of them. That's all. Be quiet, for God's sake. Uh, please leave us, monsieur. His eminence and I wish to finish our discussion alone. There's the alchemical symbol of the earth on the lid. There's the alchemical symbol of the earth on the lid. I am sorry, sir, but the conference room is under preparation and is consequently inaccessible to guests. Could you perhaps help me? What can I do for you, sir? Where did this sword come from? From the garden, sir. That sword belongs to one of the statues in the garden. Thank you very much. Don't mention it, sir. The sword probably came from this garden, but what could it have been used for? Ariadne. In Greek mythology, she helped Theseus get through the labyrinth. Hmm. Looks like there's a crack in the region of the heart. If I recall the Iliad, Ariadne is none other than the daughter of Minos and Pasiphae. She was in love with Theseus and helped him in his quest to kill the Minotaur in return for a promise of marriage if he defeated the monster. She gave him a reel of thread so that he could find his way back through the labyrinth, which was famous for being unsolvable. But once the beast was slain, the gallant was quick to abandon her on an island. Turns out heroes are not what they once were. 
Let's see. A crack as long as my finger. And what's going to happen if, if I've got it wrong? Ariadne. Try something else. Son of Daedalus and Nocrate. Impossible to mistake him with those wings. After flying too close to the sun, they came unstuck and he fell to his death. <laughs> Pity. Hey, there's no crack here. Well, let's keep going. Minos, son of Zeus in Europa. If I remember correctly, he was the king of Crete. Married to Pasiphae, he had many children, including the famous Ariadne, whom history remembers for her thread. Hey, there's a crack in that statue. Great, honey. Daedalus. He's the architect of the labyrinth, and if I'm not mistaken, he's also the father of Icarus. Well, Monsieur de Richet, 
What brings you here? If I tell you what I'm looking for, Monsieur Peru, will you promise to keep it to yourself? Hell no. And anybody who gives you a promise like that is an unmitigated liar. Trust no one, Monsieur Derichet, or you'll soon be a dead man. I bid you good luck. You'll need it. I wonder what this kiosk is doing in the middle of the garden. Too cramped to be able to do much. Well, there must be something going on there. What is that? Looks like a sort of opening mechanism. Milling Mortimer, I bet it's booby-trapped. There's a little hole at the fingers. Pretty sure if I get it wrong, I'll, I'll get pricked. Damn you, Mortimer. Reminds me of traps I studied in Egyptian tombs. like this slab moves. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a passageway underneath it. It's up to the just to deliver judgment. Truth unlocks all possibilities. Pasiphae, daughter of Perseus and sister of Circe. She married Minos and became the queen of Crete.
she has no cracks. For once, justice is done. She won't pay for the errors of the others. Icarus didn't have any cracks either. Maybe the innocent are protected here. Let's hope it brings me good luck. All right, let's continue anyways. Ariadne. Let's see. Oh, what's wrong? Either I'm imagining things or my hand was pricked. It had poison on it. My head, I feel hot. Ariadne. Ariadne. Try something else. Daedalus. is in the region of the heart.
Again? I... You can't be serious, Manuel. You know that's not going to happen. You must leave me alone now. I have agreed to everything. Even to... Agreed? I wasn't aware you had a choice. What's going on here? I... What now? What else must I do to win back my freedom? Obey me. Now get out! <gasps> what was that? That's the third time in three days. See if you're you're in there, mother. A fragment of amber. Bandages. Hmm, someone's been patching themselves up. Looks like my mother took advantage of being in hiding to change her bandages, huh? This is silk. She must have used her own clothes. Hmm, there are patches where the blood isn't totally clotted. That's a good sign, right? She changed them recently, which proves she's still looking after herself and still believes in her chances. Well, I'd love to tell her to keep hanging in there. Don't move! Wait, I'm not armed. Who are you? Good God, Mother, what have Tell you- Tell me who you are! 